In this video, I'll show you how you can use Adobe Captivate Prime to evaluate the effectiveness of your e-learning. Every organization in the world has continuous improvement within its core values nowadays. Continuous improvement is a cycle, just like the learning, design, and development cycle. Once you've put your e-learning courses uh, out there, you need to check if they're effective. Traditionally, as uh, learning professionals, we use Kirkpatrick's levels of evaluation. Let's briefly take a look at those before we proceed. Level one is, of course, the feedback from the learner. So once you've administered the training and they've completed their, their, uh, uh, their requirements of the training, we usually give these out in a classroom setting that we're often calling them smile sheets, um, which is great. Um, but, uh, you know, on an online case, you need to provide these as well. Some way for the learner to tell you what they thought of the training, their immediate reaction to the training. Level two is where we capture the learner's immediate retention of the knowledge, skills, or taught behaviors by administering a final test of some kind. This could be a simulation where they, they have to perform a set of tasks, or it could be something simple like a series of multiple choice questions. Level three is where we evaluate the learner's knowledge, skills, and behaviors back on the job. So let's say a month from now or two months from now, what we can do is uh, do through uh, feedback from the manager or perhaps through on-the-job uh, observation, we can find out if the employees have implemented these changes in their workplace to perform better or more effectively. Level four is usually done outside of a learning management system and is based on organizational results. These could be comparing year-over-year -year results uh, from uh, employee or customer surveys or perhaps financial results. And you, you would partner with the appropriate department like the finance department or perhaps the HR department to get that information. So for the last couple of weeks, I've been uh, playing around with the trial version of Adobe Captivate Prime and to see what kind of reporting capabilities it has and to see how I can track e-learning using this as a tool. And uh, I've discovered that it's actually very effective for doing exactly that. Let's take a look at, uh, at the tool itself. So I'm presently logged in as an administrator. The administrator has full access to all the reporting and all the, the capabilities. But most e-learning designers are probably just going to be authors where they'll have the ability to go in and do certain things. But if you want the full reporting capability, you're going to need to partner with someone who has administrator rights to the tool, and they can, they can definitely do that for you. So I'm going to go into the courses section. Here's a course that I've created called Canadian Trivia. It's just a demo course. And uh, right off the bat, just a quick glance, I can see it's got this little uh, shield here or chevron or whatever you want to call that. And uh, it's got the number 71 inside of it. If I hover my mouse over it, I realize that this number represents course effectiveness. And this is a really great way. I like this because it's at a glance information. I don't need to drill down into a detailed report to find out that overall 71, and if you're thinking in terms of percentages, uh, 71 is a good result. This is a highly effective course. And we can click on this and get a little bit further detail and find out what, uh, what information comprises that, that value. It's a combination of results from the level one, level two, and level three evaluations for this particular course. If you uh, click on this little more icon down here at the bottom right hand side, you'll see how that breaks down a little bit further here. So you can see that uh, in this particular case, we've received level one feedback from three users. In this case, only three users have taken the course. Two of the users had average uh, level two results. One of them had an excellent result. And uh, we've received feedback from uh, two different uh, level three um, evaluations as well. Now, if you see how this uh, course effectiveness number is calculated, you can see here the smallest sliver 
is in fact the level two scores from quizzes. Um, you might instinctively think, well, the final test is the most important thing. When you really think about how uh, employees perform their work on the job, writing a test is actually not the most important thing when calculating course effectiveness. It's a, a moment in time, it's a, an immediate evaluation of a learner's knowledge, skills, or learned behaviors uh, right at the end of a course. An hour after that, that information is almost irrelevant, really, because uh, they could have forgotten it all, or maybe they've learned other things that have replaced that information. The level one feedback from the learners, I think, is, is fairly important, and you can see it gets a larger slice of that pie. This is what the employees thought of your course or the, the, the members of your organization thought of this course upon completion. So when you finish a, a course in Adobe Captivate Prime, you have the opportunity to provide feedback um, either right away or maybe the next day or next two days, whatever. And that sort of feedback are the details like, you know, what did you think of the course material? Would you recommend this course to other users and so on? The largest piece of the pie you can see here is the level three feedback. This is the feedback from managers. There are other ways that you can capture level three feedback, but quite frankly, the best way is to find out if the manager of that employee thinks that they've performed uh, better than perhaps they did in the past. And that's uh, a true measure of an employee's results. These are the people who evaluate the employees after all. So you as, a, as a, a learning and development professional can sit there on a bench somewhere with a clipboard and a pen and paper and take some notes down while you observe an employee perform in the workplace. But that's a, also just a moment in time. The manager, of course, has access to their employees every single day, and they can provide feedback that's probably more effective than what you can do. So after, let's say, a month or maybe two months, you can set up that they'll receive a notification in the LMS to provide their feedback on how the employee has improved, and they can give you that, uh, that through the form of a survey as well. So this is really good information, but you might want to drill down even further and find out some of the specifics. And this is where being uh, logged in as an administrator can really help out. I'm going to click on this course. And then from the course reports section over here on the left hand side of the page, you can see I can access the quiz scores, the level one feedback and the level three feedback and get into the more specifics uh, or the more uh, specific aspects of these, uh, these reports. Let's start off with level one feedback. And we'll take a look at what people thought. Uh, first off, I should point out that you can export these scores to a comma separated value uh, document, which or CSV document, which you can load into various spreadsheet programs, uh, or even just a simple text editor if, if need be. But this is great if you need to share this information with managers or stakeholders that you know that this course might be associated with but at a glance here you can see well you know the feedback has been pretty positive for this course you could also notice trends so you know if uh, if a user found the training materials easy to navigate um, you'll see strongly agree or agree and that sort of thing um, if they felt that the time required to complete the training was within their expectations. Um, if you had a lot of disagree or things like that, you can look at that. You can find out maybe I'm not making it clear that this is a one hour course instead of a 30 minute course, that sort of thing. And again, it's uh, you know great to see the results that most users would recommend this course to a friend or colleague. So good information here. Let's take a look at the level three feedback. Just click on that here. So you're going to see um, a rating. It's re really just one question that we're asking um, the, the managers. We're asking them if the employee's performance has shown distinct improvement after taking this training. 
And the first manager here said, well, strongly agree. So that's good news. And that's not the manager's name, that's the learner in question. But David's manager wasn't quite as strongly, but he did feel that, you know, David improved. So that's a good sign as well. We're still waiting to hear from another manager or perhaps the same manager on uh, Paul's scores as well. So hopefully those come back soon. But again, you're looking for trends. You're looking for uh, certain things. Like let's say if the feedback from a particular manager within the company uh, is showing that he's not getting the results that he expected from his employees completing this training, perhaps you can work more closely with that manager and find out if their needs perhaps are different than everyone else in the organization. Maybe they need a specialized version of the course. Let's look at the quiz scores. Now remember, on the overall course effectiveness, quiz scores were considered um, a relatively small sliver of that course effectiveness pie, if you will. But I think it's still important to look at your quiz questions from time to time and see if they can be improved upon. I generally think that your level one evaluations are gonna go up and maybe to a lesser degree, your level three valuations will go up as well if learners are more successful on the final quiz, the level two. Let's take a look at this here. So we have three different learners. A pass for this particular course is 80%. Uh, one person failed, unfortunately, but they did they got close. One more question they would have passed. Um, they may attempt to take it again, in which case that score would go up. Uh, both Stanley and David passed uh, with an 8 and 9 uh, respectively. You can also show this as percentages, which might be more effective for your organization to see it that way. But as a learning design and development, uh, instructional designer, whatever it is your job title is, uh, I find the best thing for you to look at is to look at this information by question. And it's set up to be a, a very simple to understand uh, bar graph or bar chart. And you can show all the possible questions or you could just drill down to a couple questions at a time. But it's fairly easy to read this information. So if the bar is this uh, sort of black olive color here, that's an incorrect result. This very light gray color is representative of not attempted. Now, something to note about not attempted, it's not necessarily users who've skipped that question. But uh, in this particular instance, it refers to users who didn't see that question. This particular course has about 20 or 30 questions but each user is only presented with 10 of them. So in some cases, learners won't see all of the questions and they'll show up in this not attempted section. Uh, in this case here, uh, this first question was, who is the head of state in, of Canada? This is um, this, uh, both the two users that answered this question uh, received incorrect. So there's a couple of things to consider here. Perhaps the information that's presented in the, the content portion of the course is insufficient for them to answer this question effectively. If this question is truly important for their job duties, their job performance, then you may need to reinforce the content in the earlier part of the, the course. Now, there is another possibility as well that there could be something wrong with the quiz question itself. In this particular case, I think this is a bit of a trick question. The distractors for this question show a bunch of prime ministers of Canada. And so your, your instinct might be to select Justin Trudeau or Stephen Harper or one of these other political leaders. But in fact, the correct answer for this is Queen Elizabeth II. So it's kind of a trick question. Most people are gonna choose Justin Trudeau as he's the current uh, uh, Prime Minister of Canada. But in fact, the correct answer is Queen Elizabeth II. She is the head of state of Canada, even though she doesn't actually run the country on a day-to-day -day basis. So kind of a trick question. You're tricking users into selecting the wrong answer by making the distractors seem more plausible. 
So you may want to reconsider that question. Maybe uh, in this case, uh, a question where the distractors aren't so compelling uh, might be a better choice. Let's look at another question here. So who was elected Prime Minister of Canada in 2015? Uh, probably too early to really evaluate this question because as you can see, one person has seen this question and they got it right. Two people were not shown this particular question and we really don't know how they would have answered. Uh, so, you know, until more users take this particular quiz and see this question, we don't really know if it's an effective question or not. Here's a third option. Two users have selected correct and one uh, shows that as not attempted. So I'd say that for the most part, or at least at this moment in time, safe to say that you don't really need to adjust this question. It seems like it's pretty plausible. That makes a lot of sense. You can choose different questions here. You know, in this example here, uh, in what year were Upper and Lower Canada formed into the province of Canada? All three of the users uh, got this question correct. So again, that probably means this question is pretty effective, as is the knowledge presented earlier in the course. So again, like the other reports, you're looking for trends. If you see that everyone always gets uh, question number four wrong, maybe you need to look at the course material. Maybe you need to look at that quiz and see if it can be improved. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.